Youth unemployment is regarded as the bane of society since an idle hand is said to be the devil's workshop. Finding a job in Nigeria for many youths is an uphill task due to the dwindling economy. To check this, economic experts have advocated alternative job opportunities such as self-employment. They argue that with natural talents, young people can be gainfully employed. This informs the reason for the guided missiles church to organize a talent show titled Gifted and Sent for Youths. Some young people at the program were involved in talent displays such as music, drama, dance and football juggling. The organizers believe that everyone is blessed with a gift or gifts by God from birth which they are celebrating. We thought it's necessary to put something together for our youth. Uh, it's not only about just singing in church and all that. It's about knowing that somebody has something God has put in them. And we found that it's not what is being tapped into by governments of nations. So we thought it necessary to go to diversify as it were, just widen the scope and bringing people into the net. Participants called for government at all levels to support events of this nature towards encouraging youths to lead a crime-free life. The government has to look into this and buy into it. Let government come in, let them look in what and partner with us and really fund this. When you fund this, you put an end to criminality, as it were. These ones are talented. The judges of the competition said the performances put up by the contestants showed that youths have potential that can be harnessed to develop the country. This show represents celebrating and cultivating the content in each person believing that everyone has something different, something unique called gifts or talents in their hearts, in their lives. And so this show is to help them to showcase these talents and at the same time to allow them to express themselves. It's like being given a platform and from there they can take it to another higher level. Apart from creativity, we are looking at time management. Within time, uh, we are looking at discipline. noted that there is no limit to what they are capable of achieving. They also expressed gratitude to the organizers for the opportunity. We can pass message through dance, we can express ourselves, our feelings through dance, so like it's the best way for us. I would like to say a very big thank you to the organizers of this show and it is it has really been a great job and the show is very very it's a very big show and very great. Programs like this for the youth, I think it's very important. I think that it helps us to grow our talents. I think that it gives us a platform that allows us to bloom and to showcase what the different gifts that God has given to us. And I'm very grateful for this. Uh, this kind of program should be done regularly. You know, it, 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 in a way, empowers you know the youth. You know, fellow youths like me to you know bring out the best in them. I mean, you know, in a country as such as this, where you you have less jobs, you have unemployment is on the increase. I'm here to draw my and I'm here to win because my dad taught me since, that, since five months. The displays here attest to the fact that Nigeria may be facing scarcity in many areas but not in talents. With highly endowed young people like these participants, the future is certainly bright for Nigeria. TVC News, Adebanke. And welcome to the entertainment segment of the Saturday Breakfast Show this morning. I am Theophilus Ilama, and as usual, my co-host is here with me, Adebanke Oduni. 
How was your weekend? Oh, how was the week? My week, week so was far? fine. And my weekend, last weekend was good. I discovered that boy in the report, mm -hmm. the, the little drummer. He started drumming from about five months, and he's five years old today. Five months? When he was drumming, I was in awe, like, are you serious? Do we have this kind of talent in this Nigeria? I'm hoping that we can make it, bring him in or maybe do like a special with him it's, so it's that our possible. audience can yes, see. Because it, it, the, the amount of talent there. Yeah, it was, know, it was so it's, good. It's so, it's so, so good, actually, of, of course. And it was your birthday on Monday, right? Last week, Monday. Last week, Monday. Excuse Monday. me. I can't believe you so forgot. Happy birthday. I didn't forget. Don't worry. I didn't forget. <laughs> <laughs> of course, today we have an exhilarating time for you. Of course, we have a thespian. She has achieved so much greatness in and out of the borders of Nigeria and its film industry. And this person has showed the possibilities of living life to the fullest, despite de um, deep challenges. This powerhouse is none other than, drum rolls, good, Taiwo Ajayi License. Of course, she's one of the greatest actors who has graced our screens for years, bringing elegance, entertainment, and so much more to audiences across and outside the country. Thank you very much for coming. The pleasures and indeed the honor is mm. mine. I am so excited to meet you. If really, I'm so excited because it's we've watched you on TV over several years, different, especially with Tinsel and several other um, drama and, and soap operas and the likes. And you have grown gracefully over time. You are 82. How does it feel at this time? You 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 you're so glowing and shining at 82. Well. I keep my nose clean and wash behind <laughs> my ears. <laughs> is how I call it. I don't have an idea mm. uh, what happens. I just put one foot in front of the other. Wow. Kappa diem. Mm. Mm. You seize the moment, you live at the moment, and don't worry about what's gone in the past. The past is gone. True, true. The future is yet to come. And right now is what I have, and so I make the most of what I have. Mm. It's called the present. True. It's a gift. Live in the present. I live. Mm. So what would I you live say, in the moment. How, how would you describe your acting career so far? And I wanted to really ask this question, because I, I mean, I haven't really met anyone that has acted um, in foreign countries, on stage, or in fil films. What is the difference between Nollywood and let's say Hollywood or let's just say the foreign film industry, what would you say is the biggest difference? Every country, every nation has its own story to tell. And over there, they've decided that it's a story worth telling mm -hmm. and they professionalize it. In other words, like, like many of the things that they do, you make sure that you're good at what you do. It's not a hobby. So they differentiate between the amateurs, they call them, who are going all the time. You see them in churches and everything. But they won't profess to be professional actors. The difference is here that we, everybody is an actor. Mm. But then, as Shakespeare said, everybody is an actor. The world is a stage, and all of us were playing. In, in the real sense, that's who we are. But in order to do what we do, and make people believe the unbelievable, mm -hmm. uh, you really have to have special skills and passion to live, to walk in other people's shoes, really. It means that you have to jettison your own, I was going to say ego, because actors have massive humongous mm. ego, uh, egos, but that's uh, actual real actors that subsume themselves in somebody else. Because acting is believing. We are projecting life. Uh, you're not play acting. There's a difference between play acting and actually wanting to uh, Wanted to show how other people feel, and that's what I do. I like, I, I, I like to see how other people feel, because if you do that, the tendency is that you're more tolerant of what's going on. You put yourself in other people's shoes, yeah. so to speak. Experiences. You're more tolerant, tolerant, and actually, I think you live the life that the Bible says about 
uh, uh, do doing unto your uh, to your neighbor what, what you, you want to, want to, want to do yeah. to yourself. It also uh, uh, means that you're going around knowing that this this could happen to me, and you want to be authentic about what you project mm. of that person. You don't judge. Mm. I read, for instance, in the Nigerian papers, uh, uh, where people will marry a, 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 an actor who, who's been kissed, and somebody boasts that all my years in acting, I've never been, no, I don't allow anybody to kiss me. Well, they are not an actor. Oh, really? You are not an actor. You don't bring your personal preferences into play. Mm. You're, you can do that when you're play acting. Mm. But when you are acting, you are that person. But many, many of these actors believe that whatever happens on screen affects them in life. Personal and that's life. why a lot of act actors will say they don't kiss. That's self-indulgent, for God's sake. That, that, that if, you, if you're going to be bad, you will be bad. Mm. Bankers go with themselves in the office. They take themselves over a, a desk and all that. Nobody talks about that. True, true. That's OK. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do that, and there are ba bankers who go to work, and they are pure, and they're faithful to their spouses. Mm -hmm. It's no different. So if you say, uh, if I'm required to be passionate about somebody, if I'm in love with somebody, it is a fact that we don't really have to get, go for it. But we have to convince the people that this is what lovers do. Mm. So you can't feign it. You can't pretend then because that's not acting. So you have to live it. You live it. Acting is believing. Mm. I mean, <laughs> you, can, you can do your acting and you live it. It's, it's a job of work for God's sake. You live it when you've finished it and go back to your normal life. You don't have what, you, uh, what we have here, Babaluwe, yeah, uh, container, yeah, somebody or the other. So you take your character with you. A proper actor would not want to be known with one character they play. Mm -hmm. True, true. In order to prove your mettle, you want to show that you can tackle all manner of characters, uh, characters and situations. Mm. That's the difference. It seems so simple. But so to start moralizing about acting means you are not an actor. You're, you're, you're play acting. Okay. So it seems that some people take the, the love experiences outside, or maybe let, let's, let's just say the sexual experiences outside, and I'm talking about sex for rules. What do you have to say about that, and what really is the solution? Because some people say that uh, if I don't do it, I won't get roles, and I won't grow as an, as an actor or as an actress. So what do you have to say about that? That's what we're saying. Uh, casting couches have all, always been there, even, oh. uh, even abroad. Mm. Mm. Haven't you heard about the Me Too uh, uh, yes, campaign? We have. The Me Too campaign, yes. yes. Yeah, of, a, uh, of Weinstein. Weinstein. Well, for years, if uh, 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 anxious girls who want to get on in Hollywood uh, have to succumb to him. So people, what I'm trying to say is people are bad. There, there is no excuse. People are bad. And if you're so blindingly uh, ambitious that you'll give anything to get there, oh, that's a little bit of uh, psychosis, isn't it? Mm. You're sick. And uh, if you don't look desperate, believe me, nobody's going to offer you. It takes two to tango. Yes, it does. It does. If you tell the producer that you do anything to get a part, anything, and you don't have to verbalize it. Mm -hmm. Just in the eyes. Body language. Mm -hmm. If you're accepted, acceptable, if it's acceptable to you for people to hit on you and you don't say anything, you, there's nothing you say to say that, no, mm -hmm. let's keep it real. And then, of course, they'll. Sick. And they have the power. It's human nature. But to express might to be, to, be, uh, to be right. So 
two tango is bad for the man to do that, morally bankrupt, actually. So it's not peculiar to Nigeria. But if we encourage, if you don't, you know why some, sometimes that can be? If you're talentless and you want to be f famous, you want to be popular, then somebody, you come in, you don't have skills. Mm. You see that they're, they're auditioning, you're pretty, and this, which, which is what we're marketing here. Sure. You have to be pretty, pretty, you have to have big bum bum, and you have to have big whatever it is. And I always say that you can have your face like the back of a bus. And you also find if you have thing. something to say, people are going to listen to you. So actually, it's not about so much about glamour. It would be glamorous because when you, especially when you're intelligent with it, when you know what you're doing, you inspire people. Yes. What you what you chasing will chase you, but we're too impatient for that. We come in, don't have any experience. Uh, we have uh, there's another tendency here. Everybody is a superstar. We want to be stars. They don't want to be actors. They want to be stars. And is that affecting the production output, the kind of movies we give out in the industry? Effectively, it will, naturally. You can't give what you don't have. If that's what you're giving, then the quality of your production is going to be suspect. You know, And <laughs> we, we sell abroad, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, who, are, who are buying our goods at movies? Nigerians. And, and, and they buy Nigerians because they want to find out what's going on in, in Nigeria. It's natural mm -hmm. to want to see something from your own people. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And because you have that sort of captive market, there is also a tendency for us not to make too much of a, of an effort. Mm. Because in any case, as I said, everybody thinks they're an actor. People mis, um, misinterpret being an actor for being a star. Now, what, the, what, what was the difference? There are people who don't have, an, have a spot of talent that can be stars. Mm -hmm. It's the way they look. Mm -hmm. It's the aura they exude. In, I'm, I'm defining it by what uh, you see. They come in, they're like that. They don't have... They, they play themselves time and time and time again. Mm. They can play another role. Yeah. So there are, there are those, but if you want to be a, an artist, an artist is not necessarily a star. Okay. Judy Dench, I don't know whether you know about Judy Dench, and Maggie Smith. Yeah, Maggie Smith. They're very pretty to you. Mm -hmm. They're not. Mm. Or oh, they're brilliant actors. Oh, wonderful interpreters of, uh, uh, of stories. Mm -hmm. Skillful performers. That's the difference. Those are the real stars. Mm. Oma, well, I can see that you are both a star and an actor. I would like to, I would like to know um, how why did you leave your corporate job in the 1970s to pursue an acting career? Did you feel a calling to it, or did you just feel like, oh, let me try this out, and maybe it will, and eventually it worked? It's a long story. I'm an accidental actor, actually. Lion and the Jewel. Yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't know I was an actor. Yeah, I... I, I uh, he's dead now. His name was Yemi Ajibade. God rest his soul. He was toasting me. <laughs> <laughs> and one day, I say, uh, it, they were rehearsing Lion and the Jewel, the premiere of yeah. Lion yeah. and the Jewel at the Royal Court Theatre. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, after work, I was a civil servant in England. I would go take him for coffee. And I was sitting in the foyer. And the director walked past and asked whether... Uh, I was an actor. In those days, I used to be very sharp. Oh, so sharp. Oh, you still are. You still are. <laughs> and he came, and I said, no, I'm waiting for you. I said, would I like to join? Every year when I was in England, 
I took a holiday. I went to take one course or the other. And I said to myself, this must be what I was meant to do for that year. So I got to the office the following day and I asked my boss if I could get a temp, a temporary uh, assistant to take over from me while I went on my holiday. So I called for my holiday early and went to do this production. And we opened. And <laughs> as in Nigeria, a star was born. And at the door, dressing room door, were people from the BBC mm. uh, and agents. <clears throat> I was signed on on that night by Premier Management, Elizabeth Allen Jeffries, her name was. I hope she's still alive. I was so. The following week, I was at the BBC with, 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 with Mr. John Smith, producer there. And then I started getting jobs. And after that, Lumumba's, uh, uh, Connor Cruz O'Brien, who was Assistant Secretary General to Doug Hammarskjöld of the UN, they murdered Lumumba. Mm -hmm. And his play, Murderous Angels, was based on the shenanigans, the UN shenanigans, and how they killed Lumumba. And I played Pauline Lumumba. There was no dialogue for me. And I begged them that, you know, when somebody died like that in my place, we would give away keeping, we would give, give away. Oh, they didn't think anything of it. They said, well, you go ahead. So Glenna Foster Jones, who was another actor in, my, in the production, Sierra Union she was, said, so we've concocted uh, uh, a scene. Candles, lantern, and everything. And I, I, I did a dirge that I heard when I was young of uh, itinerant players who were always rehearsing uh, on the other side of the fence to our house. Never saw them, never laid their eyes on them at all. But the, uh, the, the song that they used to sing, that caught my fancy and I always had it. And I sang that. I the man who was trying to marry me in those days, Mr. Lysett, flew all the way from London to Dublin to see the show. After the show, he called me. We went to dinner and he said, you got to give up this corporate nonsense you're doing, corporate thing you're doing. I know you, I'm quoting here, I know you're multi-talented. You're multi-dimensional. You should stick with acting because when you came on stage, you could hear a feather drop mm. the following morning. Such a powerful <clears throat> Bit player I was, the following month, talking about stardom, mm -hmm. the following morning, I was center stage. Wow. All the big names and big guns that were in there, I took over. Everything. Yeah. By, by evoking Nigeria and talking about how ideologically engaged I am about what we do yes. in projecting us, they didn't know what I was talking about, they, but they got the message mm. that night. And I was opening pubs, op going to, uh, to visit uh, ch uh, motherless children's home from, I, would, I was if effectively no part of. Lumumba's wife, who didn't speak mm -hmm. French, didn't speak whatever. And uh, that's how I became an actor. And so my husband to be said, you got to forget the fact you are an actor, which was a surprise to me. So I started working. And I thought I became an imposter. I felt an imposter. One of these days, they were going to catch me out. They're going to find me out. They've got to know that I am a fraud. I had a better train. That's a Nigerian thing. Mm. We've got to train. We've got to have the quality. We've got to have the certificate. I must go train, even though I was in demand. So I went to train. 
I went into a flurry of training. I spent a fortune on myself, dancing and everything. In a dance class at um, Covent Garden, Opera House Covent Garden, in a Wagner uh, opera, the producer came to the uh, class to dance center where I was training, picked me up to join, to dance in Tannhauser, Wagner's Tannhauser. That's how it happened. And then I was doing rep and repertory. You, you start honing your skills, mm -hmm. working like that at that level. And then it went and went and, and they come to see you. That's how I got some mothers do have them. Yes. General Hospital and, and so on and so forth. Father's Clinic. Yeah. That's how I became an actor. So uh, uh, if you, th that I had an ambition, I, I, had, I had no thought of it at all. So my husband said, look, if it's the money you're making, because I was earning uh, decent, so if it's the money, I'll put some money in there, your account every month, you go train, be an actor. Mm. So you, you mentioned something, you ended it with that, training. Yeah. Training. Education, education, education. It's not just training. Mm -hmm. You have to have formal training. You have to read prodigiously. Mm -hmm. You have to find, you have to be curious. You have to be inquisitive. You have to find out what's going on in the world. You have to be, <laughs> I always say, I am a generalist. You have to know about science. You have to know physics, quantum physics. You have to know about prostate cancer. You have to know what's happening in your body and that body. You have to be a general, specialist generalist. If you you. Yourself in good. other words, you have to be so educated, mm -hmm. not just literate. I mean educated about most things mm -hmm. so that somebody starts. And I got that uh, also. From my training, funny enough, as a secretary, mm. as a typist, most of the texts that we typed. Yeah, you had to read and type it. About all sorts of things. And I was as, uh, absorbing this. And that, that, that inspired me to go and find out about art. Okay. okay so you, sorry, for one more time. <laughs> I'm actually being time conscious here because we have a next segment. I Come know. On. I do go on, so you must stop. <laughs> So we're going to do something, um, maybe a fitting end to all of this. Maybe you could show us a bit of your acting prowess here. I'm your son going to marry someone who you do not want me to marry. Me, so, me. I'm okay. the one who doesn't want to marry. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> so act it out for me. Where do you find that? She? Mm-hmm. Uh, she, wor she works as an accountant. Where does she come from? What are her roots? Mm, okay, okay. Well, she, she's from a good family, mommy. Well, how would you know that? What do you know about them? Well, her father's an industrialist and her mother um, owns a chain of businesses and all of that. Oh. Businesses and having proper roots to different things. Mm. Completely different. What are our antecedents? What kind of family does she come from? Before they became entrepreneurs, what are we married into? How far has she gone in life? How innocent is she? Because only the best is good enough for you. Well, she's the no. best for me. How would you know that? I love her. Oh, uh, love is cheap. <gasps> <laughs> you lust for her. I'm sorry, that's a lot. There's a that's difference <laughs> between lust mm. and love. Mm. If you don't find her, her antecedents, a few, a few years down the line, you will find maybe they have some mental illness in their home. Oh. <laughs> 
And of course, she might have been pretty sexually mobile. And then we have a, if she started like that, we have a child. When you have her, when she has your child, with that child is somebody else's mark, mm. fingerprint. Because every, every woman that a woman, uh, that every man that a woman sleeps with, that man leaves his imprint there. Okay. It's a scientific mm. fact. So you can't just bring a girl home and tell me you want to marry her. You have to let my, your father and I check her out. But we love each other. Uh. <laughs> so sorry. From what I read uh, from Instagram and everything, I'm not sure that you young people know what love is what? about. Can you educate us? <laughs> Please, because I mean, before he interrupted me, I was going to ask about supportive husbands. Mr. Lysett was supportive husband. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Lysett was a supportive husband, and he supported you. I mean, what advice would you give to actors when they want to choose a life partner? He mentioned love, and I said, "Love is cheap. Love is nothing. Love is everything." As a matter of fact. Mr. Lysett did what he did because he was in love. Because when you love somebody, they're not in competition with you. Mm. There's a tendency here for men to want to dominate women. Okay? When you love somebody, you want the best for them. Mm. So you help them. When I see a husband and a wife, I know what that man is. Okay. I okay. think I know okay. his character. When you see a fine woman with a man, that man has fine brain. He knows what's good for him. He doesn't feel threatened by that woman. You mustn't feel threatened by your partner. That's true love because uh, two become one, right? Mm -hmm. So if things are going well for you, they'll go well for him. He'll be happy. The dame has spoken. The dame has spoken. It's, it, it's very incredible that we are, we're having you with us. Well, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. And thank you for talking to us, giving us these nuggets here and there. And definitely, many people are learning from this. Thank you very much, oh um, Dame Adjai, uh, Taiwa Jai License. Thank you very much. Thank you.